Hey everyone, welcome back to Make It Happen Mondays, where we talk about sales, business, entrepreneurship, personal growth, mental health, and everything in between with guests who I truly respect and I think make a positive impact on the world around us. Now, today's guest is Daniel Borodinsky. Now, Daniel is a strategic sales executive over at Microsoft. And as part of my membership, for those of you part of it, you know that I do these workshops on sales skills and tech skills. And on the tech skills side of the house, I always go looking for practitioners who have been able to figure out how to use AI tools in their own day-to-day jobs to create more efficiencies. And this time I decided to actually bring Daniel on the show, on the podcast, to give you a little taste of it, to see what these type of workshops are like with the membership. And what Daniel did, he's, he walked us through a really interesting journey. First of all, he's relatively new into sales and he got a killer senior job at Microsoft right out of the gate by doing some networking and taking a really creative approach, which I think a lot of you will appreciate. And he also works at Microsoft. So they have open AI and all these incredible tools. So he's right there seeing how it's all unfolding. But he's also using these tools himself, regardless of Microsoft, to create efficiencies throughout his process and help him learn along the way. And we talked all about how he's using it to do meeting prep, to understand his ideal customer profile, to come up with better questions, to do summaries and conversations after the fact, and even shared some of the specific prompts that he's using. You all know me, you've heard it before, and I'll say it again. If you're not using AI to do your job right now, you're missing out and you're going to get left behind. So this is one of those episodes you're going to want to listen to and pick up on some of these tips that Daniel's doing here as a sales novice and how it's turning him into the Iron Man of sales like I keep talking about. So let's make it happen. Daniel, what's going on, brother? Thanks for coming on the Make It Happen Monday podcast, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on here. This is a this is an interesting one. We've been going back and forth, and I forget who introduced us in the first place. Who was was it? Uh, it was Richard Ian Harris? Ian, Ian oh, Cognac. Yeah, yeah, Ian. Yep. Yeah, Ian, Ian Cognac. He was like, dude, you got to see what this kid's doing with some of this AI stuff. So, yeah. um, Daniel, before we get going here, give everybody a little bit of background. We're gonna for everybody listening, we're gonna get, get, talk to about some tactical things, practitioner stuff about AI and how to leverage it in the sales process and. And really just kind of dive into some tactical things here. But uh, Daniel, why don't you give them a little bit of background on where you're coming from and what you're up to these days? Sure, sure. No, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, yeah, Ian Cognac, is, he's actually my sales coach. Nice. Um, so I'm from Seattle, Washington, currently work at Microsoft um, as a sales executive. I'm super new to sales. So I've actually only been in sales for a year and a half. Um, nice. And I moved into a super strategic sales role as my first sales role ever. Wow. Um, so I've always been in marketing, I'm kind of selling internally. I worked for a medical device company, kind of helping them start digital marketing. Um, but when I got to Microsoft, I worked for their marketing team and started networking and kind of learned about sales, met a guy that was in enterprise sales, and he opened my mind to just what you could do in sales, the earning potential. And I had at that time, uh, my wife was pregnant and I was just like, oh my God, man, I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong space. So nice. from that from that time, it took me about two years. Uh, but I pretty much, you know, found one niche that I had experience in a Microsoft product, and then I found like every seller on LinkedIn that sells that thing. Made a list of them and just like prospected my head off to all these sellers. Um, and then um, through that experience, got a bunch of interviews. T- didn't get any anything for two years, but ultimately built up enough experience to to get it. And then one. One manager took a chance on me, so well, about is, a year and a half then. Well, first of all, that's a fantastic story because it's rare that people jump right into strategic sales. I guess even after two years, right? I mean, you usually have to go through the gauntlet of SDR, BDR, AE, SMB, mid market, enterprise, right? and then yeah. finally, after maybe ten years, you get to do some strategic selling with with some big ones. So. Is that, I mean, and, and it's also funny that you got that bug, you know, early on when you hear like earnings potential and stuff like that. That's a, a lot of people get into that. Like they have their career and they're just kind of happy go lucky doing their thing. And then I, ha- I can't tell you how many people I've talked to on, you know, on the podcast who are like on a plane or something like that, sitting next to somebody, <laughs> conversation comes up, person starts talking about how much money they make. And they're like, wait a minute, what? Like, yeah. how, excuse me? Like, okay, I got to figure that out, right? And then they jump into it and they figure it out from there. But what, um, I guess that that track, when you say you, like, we're going to get into the AI stuff, but I'm curious on that. When you, when you say you like identified all the sellers at Microsoft, was that just to learn from them about mm-hmm. like, like, to, like how they did what they did, what the role was all about? Yeah, yeah. It was more of, you know, I 
I have this goal now to get into sales. I see that you're in that position already. I'm yep. thinking about doing that. Any chance I can, you know, spend 10 minutes just understand your journey? Yep. You know, what's your what's your day to day like? And through that, through those conversations, um, first of all, I learned more about the role. Yeah, and then and actually understood like, am I a good fit? Would I be good yep. at this? And then ultimately, you end up building your network. And they're like, hey, yeah. man, this guy's sharp. Why don't you connect with my manager? I think there's a role opening up. You know, hey, maybe start taking these trainings. And through that, it was just everything unlocked. I love that, man. That's a that's a big, like, kind of make it happen mentality. Because I, I, a lot of reps will ask me, like, what do I do to get to the AE level? What do I get to do there? I'm like, why are you asking me? Yeah, well, you got go AEs find AEs. Your, yeah, you got AEs at your company. Like, go find the baller AEs that you want to you want to look, yeah. you know, mirror and, and, and what role you want and go talk to them. They'll exactly. all, they'll all, not all of them, but a lot of them will give you the time, give you the ideas, what you need to do. And then to your point, I don't think what they realize is that through those conversations that other conversations come up, right? Yep. So it's just, you know, you don't, I, I mean, I used to do that early in sales where I would just do informational interviews with people just to say, yeah. hey, I'm just kind of curious. And it's almost like the podcast here. I mean, a lot of people yeah. are actually starting podcasts and they'll bring on the persona that they're trying to sell to. Yeah. And then, but they won't sell to them and they'll just have a really cool conversation. And inevitably it leads to, hey, what do you do, by the way? Oh, cool. Well, you know what? You exactly. should talk to so and so about that, right? Yep. Exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's well, a, it's, it's a, it's a piece of advice I give to a lot of people now that ask me, like, hey, how'd you get into sales? I'm like, hey, this is what you got to do. Go find all yeah. the sellers. Go find who's in the position you want to be in. Yeah. Go find all those people, as many of them as you can. Yeah. And come off humble, ask them for, you know, a couple, some time to, to learn from them, see how you can add value to them and watch the, watch everything unlock. Love it, man. Love that. So cool. So, let, so how'd you get into like, I mean, obviously being at Microsoft, right? There's, there's open AI, there's, you know, all the stuff that's there and you got all the tools and, and everything else. But I guess for you getting into it and not having all the bad habits that most sales reps do coming into this world of AI, right? Cause I think a, a huge challenge for a lot of people right now in adopting AI is just like adopting any new technology. Like it's, it's about a change of your process, right? Like, and for me, you know, I'm a 47 year old man here. Right. And I got my shit like locked as far as how I do things. And so trying to get me out of like one system and into another or get out of one process and into another is really, really hard to do. So I think there's a benefit to you that you just kind of got into it relatively recently with not a ton of bad habits, but where, how were you introduced to the AI stuff and when did that light bulb go off? Yeah. For me, it was like, literally I was scrolling through LinkedIn and Gary Vaynerchuk popped up on my feed yep. and he had a reel there that said, this isn't the most game changing to his, you know, his, his face on top right. of the chat GB. This is the most game changing, least yeah. thing you could go play with it, go see what it is. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And I just started playing with it that night. And I remember that night, I probably, it was probably 9 PM. I saw that thing. I stayed up till 2.30 <laughs> playing yep. with it because yep. my mind was blown, especially yep. for me. Cause I, I don't have the sales experience. I'm selling a super complex product at Microsoft. Well, I'm selling Dynamics 365. <laughs> so that's the entire business application suite, ERP, yep. CRM, solves every problem under the sun. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I um, have everything riding on this role. So I quit. I had my, my, my wife, she was a hairdresser in Seattle. So she stopped working because <laughs> we had the kids. And I was just like, all right, I mean, earning potential is there. Let's go get it. So I yep. just kind of went all in. And um, hired Ian as my coach. So he kind of gave me the blueprint of like, hey, here's how you really run the sales cycle. So it's almost like I had all the inputs that I could use for chat, for AI prompts yeah. in terms of like, hey, I'm trying to write a prospecting email. Here's how I want to structure it. Here's how I want to think about it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that night, I mean, I was going down the rabbit hole of yeah. trying to understand like, I can learn my entire product of what I sell using chat GPT. Hey, write me an email here. How does this company work? How do they make money? Just yeah. kind of using it as my thinking partner almost. That's the way I like to think about it. And that's, and I think that's an important distinction for people because I think that the, too many people are looking at these AI tools to automate whatever they're doing, right? So that they can get more time back to focus on the real, and that to me is kind of, I don't want to say a fool's errand. There's definitely things you can and you should automate, right? But to me, the, the, what you just said there, as far as the thinking partner, right? As far as like, Hey, I'm curious about this. Why is this happening? What's going on and taking you down the rabbit holes, but rabbit holes of curiosity. 
And and I think that's where I, too many people are missing out. They're looking for the easy button for this thing to do it, their job for them. And quite frankly, for the reps that are looking for that, like they're ultimately just going to get replaced by that thing. Like, because if you can get the thing to do all of the stuff that you were doing, at, quite frankly, I don't know what I'm I'm paying you for, right? So, what do you remember the first uh, the first prompt that you put in? Um. <laughs> It might have been something like write me a rap song about something. It might have been something stupid, like something yeah. like that. Like I'm yeah. Oh, yeah, like or maybe like write me a love letter. So something, like, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. know, something like generic. But then but I remember the I remember the prompt because I was working I mean, I don't remember how long I was into the sales role. I think I was finally into my like first full fiscal year and I was maybe in a in account planning mode. Yeah. Yeah. And I had identified kind of my tier one accounts, my A accounts where I thought I could make the big deals happen. Yeah. And, you know, everybody in a strategic tech, tech sales role, I'm sure they know, like, you know, it's super important to bring a tailored point of view on how you oh, think yeah. you could potentially help them solve their strategic initiatives, right? Yeah. And I'm in this new role. I don't have a lot of experience. I don't really understand the product I'm fully selling yet. I don't, yeah. you know, I never sold to manufacturing companies or retail companies. So I'm like asking super basic questions like, okay, you know, let's take Walmart, for example. Like, what is, yeah. my first problem was like, what does Walmart do? How do they make money? Nice. Explain it to me in a way that a that a middle schooler can understand. Okay, perfect. Basic yep. principles. How about dynamics? What does dynamics do? What the hell is CR? What is ERP? Just like super basic questions. Yep. And then and then like you can use that thread to build on top of it. So it's like okay, I'm a hey Chad GPT. The way I like to think about Chad GPT is almost like it's the most powerful blank brain in the world it doesn't really know anything um if you say build me write me an email to sell dynamics it'll send you something super generic right but you almost have to tell it it's your thinking partner it doesn't know anything you got to tell it give it the context yeah so i told it it's like you know you are a strategic tech sales professional with 30 years of experience working at microsoft and all the top consulting firms in the world i need your advice on how to sell strategically to this account in a way that solves their strategic business objectives and solves challenges that their C-suite would care about. I need your advice. Enter. Oh, perfect. I'm this person now. All right. And then you work yeah. with it. And then you say, okay, I'm thinking about solving this. I've heard this about them where I'm, I want to reach out to the CIO. Here's him. Here's his personality profile. Here's how I want to tailor a message to him. So you almost use it as this sounding board, this this thinking partner. Love that, man. And, and so... With that, like, do you do you take because um, do you t- when you t- say they take your persona or whatever? Do you put like their LinkedIn profile in there and have it scrub it, or like what are some of the things that you would do if you're gonna let's start at that beginning where you you you're account planning this, you're looking at one of your tier one accounts. Do you put like their website in there, their 10k in there, and those type of things, and then do you go to the person and put their LinkedIn profile in and you just keep asking them questions? Yeah. So what I um. I kind of use the combination of Bing GPT and then Chat GPT. So okay. Bing GPT, it's current with the internet because yeah. yep. so that's that's key because you can use, and it's I think it's just as powerful as Chat GPT yeah. now. So Definitely. I use that to do my account plan. So I don't really put their website. I'll just say, you know, my account is Walmart. What do they do? How do they make money? What are Go some ahead. of their strategic business priorities in 2023? Look at their 10K. Look at this. Whatever. Sometimes you can even, um, you know, 10Ks are often like PDFs or something you can download right. from their website. Claude AI, um, Claude.ai is a great tool where you can um, upload an entire PDF. It can be nice. hundreds of pages and then upload the entire piece. So take that 10K, upload it to Claude AI and use that to ask questions off that. So you can kind of do that. But ultimately from the account research, I'm trying to build some kind of a holistic point of view on how I think my company could help them. Right. And so depending on that, then you kind of know who you need to reach out to within the account. So let's say, um, you know, I know customer experience is a, was one of the priorities that Walmart said, you know, and in, in they want to prioritize in this fiscal year or whatever. Okay, great. So who do I need to reach out to the CIO? So now I'll uh, even maybe use the same thread in chat GPT. So it has all the context of the already the point of view yeah. that I've built. And yeah. I'll say, great. 
Now, based on this point of view, I want to reach out to the CIO. Here's some information about the CIO. And I'll go to LinkedIn and I'll copy paste his background. Yep. And then there's a tool called Crystal Nose, C R Y. Yeah. 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 So you take that thing, you copy paste their personality profile and say, hey, I want to make sure the message resonates. Yeah. And then give it as much context about the message that you want. Create a sequence for me if the, it's just anything. Yeah. See, that's the thing that's crazy is like it, it, it does do a, it does do a lot of the work for you, but right. the one fear that I always have is that again, reps are using it to have the answer, and they'll just hit send. And this is when you talk about Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, I went to his um, oh, back in 2017, 2018. I went to he has this 4D session where you can go to his office and you pay like 10 grand or whatever, and you sit down with other 10, 15 entrepreneurs, and and all his leads had. Uh, every department comes in and talks about what they're doing with some of the biggest brands. And then Gary comes in at the end mm -hmm. and does a Q and a, and around that time I had seen an AI email written better. This was back in 2017. Wow. <laughs> and there was a couple of reps from Salesforce. They actually left Salesforce and they came out and they say, Hey John, you know, we created this artificial intelligence bot. It creates super hyper personalized emails and it's actually based off of your email structure. Right. And we want to show it to you. And I was at first I was like, yeah, whatever. And, and and they said it to me and I had a heart attack. I was like, holy shit. I mean, it was better than I could have written. And and it was fast. I asked him, how long did this take? You know, and I'm like, there was no human involvement in writing this. And he goes, nope, no human involvement other than the picking the article to use from our app. And oh, by the way, it took 70 seconds. And I was like, what the shit? And this was <laughs> way before oh, and chat GPT. And so when I met with Gary what? around the yeah. same time, I was like, Gary, man, I just saw a robot write an email better than I could write. Like, what does that do for, like, what does that mean for us, right, as sales professionals? And he said something that still sticks with me. He said, you know, don't worry about the tech. You're not going to beat it, right? He goes, but <clears throat> be the last mile. You know what I mean? Like, be that last mile. Like, let, the, let, let it do all the work. Let it write the email. Let it do the research. But be the last mile. Right before you send, hit send, make sure you humanize it. Make sure, you know, those type of things. So how are you looking at that as a last mile? Like, what is your perspective on when it kicks you out an email, what do you do with that email? When it kicks you out kind of a prospectus, how do you look at that? And then how do you leverage that? Yeah. I think it's, thinking back, it's super rare for me to send the very, like, whatever the output is. You always yep. kind of add, your, it gives you a great template. So sure. the way I think about it is, I mean, when you're like, say we don't have chat GPT and you're trying to create an email to somebody, you're going to yeah. ask yourself questions. All right. Who's this person? What does he care yep. about? Um, how can I make this resonate? How can I make it more concise? You're going to be doing all that. Like those questions you're going to be asking. So now you just use those questions as a prompt. Although you like yep. think about you're thinking with the AI bot. So, hey, I need to reach out to this person. I need to make it concise. I want to make it whatever. But then ultimately it's going to use, it's going to create a great prompt, but then, you know, you, you tailor it yourself. You know, you yeah. make it, you know, maybe, you know, CTAs that'll work for you or works better with your voice. So, um, yeah, I think yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And I think that's the key is like, that's why I think there's, it's interesting that you're coming with, with no background, not limited background in sales and starting to use this because the cool thing is, is it knows all the sales methodologies. It knows all the sales frameworks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think a lot of reps are, are using too much baggage to, to bring to the table. Like there's one thing about prompting it with the right prompts as far as what to look for. And then there's the other thing about not, you know, maybe not allowing it to be creative, right? Not allowing it to stretch your brain. And so, I see that, you know, quite a bit with myself too. Like I, I kind of, I, 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 it's almost like I'm looking for, I'm leading the witness here as far as what I want the answer to be when, when I need to kind of open it up a little bit and say, okay, let, let my ex curiosity kind of expand here and see what this thing tells me. That's actually and, a really good point that I haven't, cause I've been more prescriptive in terms of what I want the output to be as well, based on Ian's point. training. So yeah, I yeah. kind of know the frameworks, the way I want the emails to go. Yeah. Line one is warm and personal. Like I have everything kind of, so maybe giving it some, some room to have you, have you found that that's like the output has been better if you kind of give it some, some autonomy, kind of create this output for me without giving it too much structure. Little bit. Right. So I I've gone, I've crossed the chasm here. Like I was super prescriptive with it and I would give it exactly the methodology and it followed it. <clears throat> and there's yeah. benefit to that. Right. Cause those methodologies are tried and true and everything else. But because everything is evolving so fast right now, 
Um, and these frameworks, a lot of the historical ones are being picked up by these AI bots and actually doing real personalization at scale. Cause mm -hmm. I used to kind of roll my eyes at personalization at scale. Like, you know, when sales loft and outreach, we're doing that stuff. And uh, I'm like, guys, just because there's a, you change the name, the title in the industry does not mean, <laughs> mean this email is personalized. Right. right. And, um, but now I, I'm seeing real personalization at scale. And so I'm, I'm seeing these bots do it, but I still think there's, there's like a, it's missing a soul and I can tell. You know right. what I mean? Like, it's like, I'll, I'll read an email and I'll be like, yeah, good job finding the trigger, making the connection. But I can tell this is an AI bot because yep. it's going auto, right? Which is why I still think that last mile is important. Yeah. And I think it's important for us now to be creative, to start uh -huh. pushing it and start yeah. opening it up and, and releasing it from some of the frameworks to see if there's something new that is going to stand out, that is going to leverage. But I mean, I think the other thing is a lot of people are are really obviously rushing towards the email sequences and writing better yeah. emails with this. And I actually think that's, the, I won't say the worst part of it, but the least interesting part of it to me, yeah. right? Because I like what you're doing. You're, you're coming up with a perspective, you know, you're coming up with an understanding and then you use that email. How else, like, let's extend the sales process here. Because I, I look at it from a discovery standpoint, you're preparing for a meeting. Yeah, I actually use these tools for like role play to tell me what like what are good questions to ask this person. So it comes up with really and I'm like, I'm trying to find impact. So what's a good impact question I can ask this person to understand to show them I understand the situation, but isn't too generic. So mm -hmm. what are some of the ones that you're what are some of the prompts that you're using kind of further on after you kind of get that perspective to comp plan and maybe send a few emails and get somebody to say, yeah, let's have this conversation. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just pulling up like a prompt that I've used. So I, you know, you use it for account planning, you use it for emails, but for meeting prep has been the yep. most impactful for me. I, yeah. I mean, um, like I even for for the Walmart example, like I'll I'll let's say it's a chat GPT prompt. Let's say I've built a point of view already within the same thread, and I'll say, okay, great, you got a response from this person. He's ready to take a meeting. My goal with the meeting is to share my high level point of view, understand his top priorities determine whether they have a problem of which you can solve or a priority goal which you can help them achieve and gain sp his sponsorship to proceed with deep discovery. Using all the information in this thread, please create a prep document for the meeting in the following format. Intent for call, colon, agenda, three bullets I can attach to the meeting invite, a high level point of view, something I can share at a high level to this person to have them open up. For example, as I mentioned in my email, I was doing some research and noticed X. I think Microsoft can help in the following way. And then discovery questions based on research to uncover problems that Microsoft can solve. So nice. you should see this thing. I mean, it's just like perfect document intent thing. Yeah. And after that, you read that thing and it gives you context. Then you can play with it, use your experience to kind of adjust things, whatever you need to do. Um, there's also another one that I had where like, let's say it's a Monday, Monday morning, you've got a meeting coming up in an hour that you're just not ready for, right? Yep. You, maybe it's a existing client that you kind of connect with regularly. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, there was an opportunity in the past. So same kind of thing, go to Bing GPT. What are the, what are some of the problems I could be experiencing if I'm a CIO at this company? Think about industry trends, current economic headwinds, et cetera. Okay. So it kind of puts me in, in the person I'm connecting with this world. And gives you perfect, you know, some great information. How could the Microsoft partnership and, you know, the product I sell help me with where I'm at today? I am in the process of evaluating X, maybe an opportunity you heard about in the, in the past. Okay. I'm focused on delivering business value through operational efficiency and finding ways to add value to my organization. So just ideas, thinking, yeah, you yeah. know, prepping for meetings. Um, and then you take that, copy paste it into Chat GPT, and say, "Hey, based on this information, give me a prep document, intent for call, create an agenda for me, a couple follow up emails." So just it, it's like it doesn't do everything. I mean, I guess it kind of does a lot for you, but yep. it's how you think about it. It's not going to do it automatically. You need to think with it. You're, you're mm -hmm. you know, you got to be there. <laughs> it's not going to yeah. automate you. That last mile, right? Yeah. And, and so, so how is you're using a lot of these tools like being like that anybody could use right but you work at microsoft <laughs> i saw some shit that so i did a post recently um about you know what i saw at dreamforce for instance right and and what i i think it was linkedin i, I was a part of their product roadmap 
and Microsoft, uh, the, somebody jumped on the thread and was like, hey, have you seen what Microsoft's doing? And I've been waiting for Microsoft forever um, <laughs> to, to get their shit together with like a full blown, because they got everything, right? I mean, it's, it's literally between LinkedIn, between Microsoft Dynamics, between Office 365, between all those different things. I mean, it is the killer app if you, if you really engage in all that stuff. And what I saw as far as the demo of uh, Dynamics 365 sales, like I was like, mm, there's pretty, it's, it's there. So oh, like, it's it's getting there. So so talk to me about from an insider's perspective. You know what are you seeing? My my view is I think we're all going to be standing from it's like sitting in front of a dashboard. I think we're all going back to full cycle sales. I think we're going to be sitting in front of a dashboard with information being fed to us. And it's not necessarily like, hey, John, you know, or, or like when I walk into the office, it's not going to be like, oh, who should I reach out to today? Or yeah. who should I set a cadence to? It's like, no, 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 no. John, you got to reach out to Daniel because Daniel just did these five things and his company just did that. And these are things. And by the way, you should call him instead of email him because he likes phone over e crystal nose type of stuff. He yeah. likes phone over email. And um, here's like three snippet bullet points that you should say when you make that phone call to him, right? Type of thing. So that's where it's almost like, I don't know if you remember Minority, remember the movie Minority Report? No, like, I haven't I seen that. It. Yeah, so Minority Report, it's, it's um, Tom Cruise and he's basically sitting there and he's got, it's futuristic, right? It's about the, how AI uses to predict murders before it's murder. So they predict crimes <laughs> before they actually happen. So you actually get arrested before you even kill somebody because these precogs and everything. <laughs> But the point is, is he's standing there with these gloves on and he's just kind of swiping back and forth, right? Yep. It's kind of like Tony Stark with Iron yeah, Man, yeah. right? He's mm -hmm. like that. So with what you're seeing, with what you're doing right now, without the baggage of sales and with what you're seeing at Microsoft and what they're doing with their platform and integrating is where do you see kind of the, the this evolving to as far as where the sales rep sits and how this technology is going to support that? Because a lot of people are wondering right now, like, what the fuck is the future of sales? And I, I have a vision, but I'm curious, you're on the inside of a company that's obviously neck deep in AI right now. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a good question. I think I've, I very much agree with what you're what you said in terms of it's going to be a single pane of glass that you can kind of work kind of the the way you articulated that I think that's where it's going. I mean the yeah. the product that Microsoft is so pretty much Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI. They're weaving in this AI capability into every aspect of their portfolio. I yeah. sell specifically business applications, so I see I see it weaved into Dynamics. A lot of it is still in preview. It's not generally available. Even us as sales reps aren't fully utilizing Copilot yet, but yep. it's called Copilot. Yeah. So you're the pilot. Copilot's in the seats. So you're working with a Copilot. Yep. It's not automating. It's not, it, but you're going to use it to help you, you know, write emails, understand your customers better, do research, you know, get insights, um, all those things. So you know, like for example, that single pane of glass, that would be like Dynamics 365 sales, a CR, you know, Salesforce, whatever CRM platform you're using, yep. you know, you have, you have it there to, you know, gather all the insights that you have about a customer, use it in your emails, different things like that. Um, so I think yeah. that's where it's going. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of scares me about a lot of what hap what is happening right now. Cause uh, you know, so many sales reps, I, 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 and I was preaching this last week at Dreamforce. It was, I, I just think we've gotten so fucking lazy in the past 10 years and we've tried to over-engineer the sales process with all this technology and kind of grow at all costs, top line revenue, go, 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 go. And we've skipped a lot of the fundamentals. And so now that sales is hard again, you know what I mean? And and these reps don't have those fundamentals to fall back on. And these tools are actually doing a lot of the work that they used to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a report that Salesforce came out with that talked about how like on average, uh, the you know, the average rep only spends like, I don't know, 27, 28% of the time actually selling, right? And then they cut out all these different pieces of like the different admin components. And that's all AI can, or AI mm -hmm. can do a lot of that. But unfortunately, a lot of the reps have turned into robots and, and a lot of that's how they justify their job. Like, well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm updating CRM, I'm doing this. And quite frankly, man, I, I, don't, I, I don't see a lot of them surviving. Like I, I see a large portion of the sales population going away because the tech's going to do the majority of the work for them. Could be, could be. Yeah, I, mean, I have the I have the benefit of not having all that experience or all that thing, yeah. and I've 
like right when I jumped in, I was like, all right, I got to do this right. So I hired Ian and he's what? kind of teaching the fundamentals. So I'm, um, yeah, I, I often, I even have it written here on my board. My lack of sales experience is my biggest advantage because right. I have to remind myself of that because often I'll get into that imposter syndrome of like, oh yep. shit. I'm going in. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, but no. maybe it's a maybe it's an advantage. It, it, no, it is because there's a big argument to be had right now of rip and replace, right? Because what got us here will not get us there. Scenario, and I and there's yeah. a lot of companies that I've talked to, CROs and everybody who are really just trying to figure out what the fuck to do because yeah. they have these reps and these teams and this tech stack that is so overbloated and it just doesn't fit the new world, and so there's a genuine and a real argument to be made here of you know what let's just burn this shit to the ground and start with ai native reps who don't have the baggage i <laughs> right? don't have the baggage of all the process who don't have and so like let's rip out our tech stack basically let's restart from a native ai and then let's go hire reps who are like you don't have the baggage have the curiosity are willing to put in the work but also know how to leverage these tools and restructure your entire sales org. And I'm seeing it. Like I think Q1, I, I think I had over 100 conversations with CROs and almost every single one of them was telling me that if they didn't are, if they hadn't already like completely restructured or abandoned their BDR, SDR group, they're, they're thinking about completely restructuring or abandoning it and going back to it and just leveraging all this AI stuff. And I don't think that's the it's answer because I think there's a transition here, but it's a real, it's a real conversation being had out there. That's crazy. No, I think. It's I mean, what I'm what I'm seeing is because I've been sharing some of these tips and tricks and things across Microsoft, and people are picking. And Microsoft, you know, the whole idea is around having a growth mindset, so they're big yep. into you know how are you using this. And managers are bringing me in; they're like, yeah, yeah, share this thing. So they're they're really encouraging. And I also think that what I see, or the biggest thing, is like people are hesitant to start trying it. So if I could just say anything on this video, it's like just go play with it, go create yeah. the stupid thing, just go play with it. And I think yeah. that. If you have a ton of sales experience, that's an advantage with this tool because you have so much, you know how to sell. You have, yeah. you know, all the, um, you know, the objections that could come up. You know your product it, better than I do. You know, there's so many things that you can use and teach the AI bot to kind of, you know, all these different, just you could train yeah. it better. You could, you could be even more powerful with AI. It's like, think of it as like putting on a, just taking a bunch of steroids for your for your sales process, you know. So just totally. do it. Just try it. Play with it. Have you trained it on your voice yet? Like I know you train it on all these prompts and like what to do, <laughs> but there's also that part of training it to sound like you, literally. So it's like write an email in my tone. Have you gone <laughs> that far with it, where you're actually teaching it to sound just like you versus just give you some answers? I haven't. I don't know if there's a formal way to do that because if yeah. there is, I would love to learn it. Yeah. But I, I've I've done things like, um, you know, here's some, here's a few of my LinkedIn posts. Here's yeah. how, please extract like what my style is and make mm -hmm. this one sound similar. I've done things like that. I've also, yeah. you know, I've had like my elevator pitches and different things for my product, um, yeah. written out and the way I tell the platform story of Microsoft and I'll take that and I'll feed it into there and then I'll say, tailor it you know, for this organization's objectives, make it okay. sound like Steve Jobs wrote yeah. it and it'll just like, it'll yeah. make it crazy engaging and things like that. But I haven't Love like it. formally done the, um, your style. Is there a way to do that? Do you know how, how do you do that? I, I mean, the way I did it was, I just asked it, how do I train you to have my style? Like I did exactly what you said, which is <laughs> jump into good. it and I just fucking asked it. I was like, yeah. Hey, how do I, how do I teach you how to be you know have my voice and write things in my vocab and it was like well just feed me you know your writings and any blog posts you have and all these different things and then i just went and i grabbed a bunch of my blog posts a bunch of my emails a bunch of my stories you know and just pushed it in there and i said and i just kept doing it i was like here's another here's a blog post i wrote here's a blog post i wrote here's a blog post i wrote and then at the end i would say okay because that's one prompt right that just goes all the way through yeah and then i then i'll say what's a prompt that I can write in the future to remind you of my writing style in this thread and how, and, and so that I don't have to go through this each time I want you to write me something new. And then yeah. it'll create the yeah. actual prompt that I can just cut and paste. And, and then I start a new thread with like a new client or something like that. And I'll be like, hey, 
here's the prompt. Rem remember, you're now acting like John Barrows, CEO of Sell Better by you know JB Sales, and you know now write an email, write a blog post, write a you know proposal in that in that tone. And yeah. sure as shit, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Right? And I think your point of like, that's my thing as far as getting people involved here. Like the people who are scared, I'm like, why be scared? Like, this is one of those things. Like th my, my favorite answer to John, how do I get started with ChatGPT is that is a fantastic question to ask ChatGPT. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally you go in and you're like, you know what? I'm a 47 year old man. I'm a, I live in Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts. I'm a CEO of a sales training <laughs> organization. I'm just getting started with ChatGPT. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Mm -hmm. How, like, what's a way that I could start leveraging this tool to start having, you know, creating efficiencies? My goal is to blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then all of a sudden, there's 15 ideas of, oh, mm -hmm. shit, well, that, that sounds cool. Let me try that one. And then go, 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 go yeah. deep, deep, deeper, deeper, deeper. And a great question to ask at the end of a prompt is yep. ask me questions to make sure that the prompt you're going to give me is to my satisfaction. So have it ask you the questions that it needs yep. to give you the best prompt. Love that. Yeah, that's the one thing I, I don't do enough of, I don't think. It's like, it's now, it's like, well, basically qualify me. I have a general idea here of what I'm looking for, Great. but ask me what questions do you need to ask me so I can give you the information so you can give me a better answer for that yep. and create the prompt that I'm looking for. Yep. All right. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's it's so, I mean, look, I think the the the... The boom has kind of, I think the first half of this year was like just holy shit chaos with everybody being like, oh my God, this is going to take over the world. Yeah. Just like everything that's kind of like now it's kind of come off of that like insanity. But what I, what I fear is that a lot of people think it's like Bitcoin or think it's like NFTs, right? Yeah. And by the way, I, I, I firmly believe that NFTs and Bitcoin are coming back. Like they're going to come back strong. Um, but I, I look at AI as different because this thing is learning on top of itself, right? The compounded mm -hmm. effect of it learning on itself. And so it's going to get just exponentially better. Whereas I look at Bitcoin and I understood why Bitcoin failed because there was no regulatory agency around Bitcoin and that's people's fucking money. And if mm -hmm. you lose people's fucking money, they go crazy, right? <laughs> And same thing with NFTs. I was like, well, that's cool, but I, what is it? There's no real, pra I mean, there's some practical application to it, but I got a GIF here. Great. I own it. Right. I don't care. He's you know, I, I see the future application of it can. where it's like, <laughs> oh, cool. You know, like for instance, you and I, we don't, we don't go to concerts anymore and get ticket stubs. And I don't, how old are you again? I forget. I'm 27. So you're way younger than me, but like back, like, you know, I used to have like, like, like ticket stubs that I would hold on to, like that. I went to this fucking concert and it was bananas. Mm -hmm. Now it's all on your phone where right. I could see, okay, well I, now that's an NFT. Now that ticket is an NFT to that concert that was bananas. Great. But eh, mm -hmm. who cares? Mm -hmm. AI though is if I think fundamentally different. Like, are you seeing it that way too? Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, the. Yeah, the practical application of NFTs and things like that. I mean, I've seen other applications with NFTs. Like, for example, if you like take the concert example too. Like, yeah. if you um, you know went to this concert, maybe now it gives you some kind of other added value access. as yeah. as future. It gives you access to future concerts, or hey, yep. you know, if if the artist throws an event sometime, since right. you have that, it gives you things like that. But yeah, I mean, AI, you're not using NFTs, Bitcoin, every single, like AI is like your partner in crime for yeah. anything that you need to do. It makes you more powerful as a person. I don't see yeah. Bitcoin and, and uh, NFTs doing that. No, I think it's- In the real world. Yeah, and, and I also don't think, and again, Bitcoin and NFTs don't compound interest on themselves, right? In yep. the sense of like they're learning. And that's, I, get, I think that's my, you know, my pessimistic, I got, I, 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 there's so much optimism for what this thing can do, but then there's the pessimism of like, holy shit, we are feeding this machine and it's going to, it's waking up and it's going to take all this stuff and eventually wake up and say, all right, humans, we don't fucking need you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like I, 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 I told this, I told this before on the podcast, probably, uh, yeah. but I, and I'm, it blew my <laughs> mind, but have you ever heard the, the, about the, the story about the Terminator in the, in the matrix? Uh, did I tell you that one or did you? No, heard of no, it? I haven't heard that one. So if you Google it, you got this woman, right? And I, and I, there's the interviews there and it's an actual person. It's not, you know, an AI version of this thing. So I got it, but who knows if it's truly true or not. But she said she wrote the book before the studio stole the movies from her. 
she wrote the book and in the book the terminator was the prequel to the matrix john connor is neo and if you think about it they actually even take it to the uh, to the religious site where jc john connor jesus christ and mary is the um immaculate reception uh conception right because remember um remember sarah connor right the mom in the first one remember the guy came from the future to protect her against against arnold well and then he impregnated her and then he went back to the future and so it's the immaculate conception because there was no guy and she that's why she was in the insane <laughs> asylum because she had a baby and nobody knew and blah 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 and so then you go on to the second terminator and the, they they project into the future about what happened when the machines woke up and started coming <laughs> after the humans and the humans had to you know fight them and, and kill their power source so they did a nuclear winter to kill the sun because that's where they were getting their power now the machines didn't have any power from the sun so they turned to humans they put us in the pods they plugged us into the matrix and they let us think that we we're now oh actually my in the world. God. and <laughs> here we are so it's like when you start to I, I have to, i haven't done it yet because like i can't waste that much time with my wife and daughter around but there's <laughs> gonna be a weekend where my wife and daughter are not around and i'm literally gonna watch every fucking episode of the terminator and yeah. every fucking episode of the matrix like back to back to back and look for the threads because oh my to a certain degree, it's like Sky. I look at Skynet and I look at Sk it like that's kind of like ChatGPT, right? It's like motherfucker woke up and, <laughs> and it was like, oh, and everybody's like, look at how cool this really? is. This is bananas. And then, yeah. uh oh. <laughs> so, oh my it, gosh. Yeah. I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm thinking about how I can use it to crush my number of this yeah, fiscal exactly. year. But yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, there's a bigger thing to it. There's, yeah, it's crazy. Well, that's why, I mean, that's why I'm curious, like, you know, from like what our kids are going to grow up into, right? Like my daughter's yeah. 12 and she is, she's not going to know a world without AI, right? Mm -hmm. Your kids are definitely not going to know a world where they die without yeah. AI. And, you know, there's all the positives that this thing can do because of the large language models and being able to analyze trillions of lines of data and code and everything like that. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> potential here that this cures cancer, that it solves climate change, right? Because it's just mass amounts of data. But then there's the flip side of, okay, you know, this thing's, you know, self-aware, uh, yep. you know, goes into these things. So it's a, it's fascinating, man. I think this is such a cool time to be involved as long as you're paying attention. And I think that's one of your points of just get involved. Cause if you're not, you will wake up one day and get replaced. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. And I mean, if mind. you have kids, if you have kids, like kind of to your point, if you have kids, they're going to be using the tool. You better know what the hell it does. Yep. Absolutely. Because or else it's like, you know, there's so many even now like parents who aren't aware of social media and they're you know 11 year olds 12 year olds are on social media and they're just completely unaware with what they're doing yeah. what they could potentially be seeing all these yeah. different things so yeah use it I'm, play with it actually one of my so i hope this happens because i think i scared my wife and daughter um away from ai for a while because i was so like holy shit look at this stuff and both of them were like get the fuck away from me <laughs> like you're way too crazy about this shit and so I scared him away, but I think I've got my daughter hooked back in because she's in seventh grade right now going to eighth and mm -hmm. she's got to go to high school uh, next year. And um, she has to do a year long project, right? And she has to pick something that she wants to learn about. And I was like, well, why don't you learn about the effect AI is going to have on education for a kid like you? And because, I mean, talk about a kick-ass year-end project and then a project that you could tell high schools like, holy shit, look what I just learned, right? And, and she's like, and when I made the connection to like, this will help actually help her get into a high school, help her get in that knowledge, regardless of AI or not, but the cool project, she'd like <laughs> light bulb went off. And the beauty is, and I really, I'm not pushing too hard because she's down to like her top three choices here and she's leaning more towards that. So I don't want to be like, do it, do it, do it. But I'm so excited because it's exactly that. I'm going to show her what's the end goal in mind. I want to create a pro like I I'm I'm a 12 13 year old girl uh this is where I live I I want to I have to learn something uh over the course of a year the goal is to present to my class a 10 minute presentation about what I've learned the topic is how AI is going to impact my generation from an educational standpoint map out a 3 month uh, thing for me to do with 10 minutes a day or whatever it is that will guide me towards the output that I'm looking for. And I don't want to cheat. I'm not trying to cheat here, you know, that type of thing. And I guarantee you that motherfucker is going to map out her entire semester. Oh, yeah. Right? Beautiful. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's good. That's a really good prompt. That's very smart. Right. This is like, this is like, I mean, that's why it's so fucking cool. If you just start playing, like you start just thinking about random ass shit, 
right? Yeah. About like, wait, oh, I'm curious. And, and I think that's the one superpower. Let me ask you this about you. Have you always been curious? I've been very obsessive in my, like whenever I get into something, whether it's, you know, lifting or boxing or when I have a goal, like, okay, I'm going to get into sales. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going all in. I think I'm very curious about the things that I want to be curious about, like personal development stuff. Like, oh my God, I can go all day, watch that yeah. stuff all yeah. day. Journal. What's yeah. the best way to journal? Oh, another tactic. My wife's like, you're watching the same shit over and over and over again. And the guy's yeah. just saying it differently. I'm just like, oh, no, I pick something up every time. Yeah. So, love it. Yeah. But yeah, you've got to be curious with this tool. Like, the, like I said, use it as a thinking partner. Don't ask it to do things for you. Ask it, think with it, ask it questions. That's actually one of the superpowers that I, I think I have, which is I think I was born naturally curious. And so this stuff to me is fascinating because I'm yeah. genuinely curious about what's going on here. And I think my hope is, is that people can use this to become curious. Because I think that is like, if I were to lean on anything for sales reps moving forward, it's business acumen, curiosity, like genuine curiosity about the client, about the role, about the industry, about everything else. And then, you know, empathy, right? Like uh -huh. really trying to have true empathy for the person that they are talking to. So if you put uh -huh. those three things together, those are things that's, that tech has a hard time replicating, right? I mean, it can help yep. you be curious, but tech isn't curious. Uh -huh. It can help you have empathy, but it doesn't have empathy. Yep. You know, it can help you with business acumen, but it, it's just giving you data. It's not, it doesn't actually have business acumen to be able to connect the dots the right way and ask the right. So I think if you look at it that way, this thing is just a, like, a, like you said, it's like steroids. Yeah. Yeah. It give it'll give you everything you need to be successful in a meeting, but it won't yeah. do the meeting for you. Yeah. So you have to like, the way I always think about it is what's your intent for the meeting? So if you can say, you know, I want to come off as a trusted advisor, I want to be curious. I want to understand mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, then you have all the data to go make that meeting happen. But that intent is key. Love it. Awesome, man. Well, look, let's wrap this up. We're up to 45, which is usually around the timeline. And I love it because this has got me curious again. I got to go back and start trying to fucking around with some more stuff here. Um, but uh, Daniel, I, you know, I know you work for Microsoft and you're doing some really cool shit. But where can, where can people find out more information? And are you sharing this stuff? Like stuff? I know you're sharing it internally, but are you like doing posts and stuff like that around this this type of thing too? Uh, not officially. Yeah. I've been thinking about, I probably should start like sharing yeah. some snippets and stuff. Um, but no, I'm on LinkedIn. That's probably cool. the best way to, for this audience and, um, follow me also and, Instagram and things, but I'm more like boxing and doing things like that personal yeah, life stuff. Go. But, um, but yeah, LinkedIn, Daniel Bordowski. Bordowski. So, and just for people listening, I'll put it in the show notes, but it's B O R O D Y A N S K Y Daniel. Yeah. And uh, go find him on LinkedIn because he's doing some really cool shit here. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, hopefully you've got, uh, hopefully this conversation got you curious enough to go start playing around with it if you haven't already. And uh, for those of you who have, hopefully he gave you some good ideas on some new prompts that you could try out as you go. And like I always say at the end of all these podcasts, go out there and make somebody smile today because no matter how bad your day went or you think it's going, you make somebody smile today and you know you had a good day and the world needs a lot more of that right now. So thank you all very much and I will see you on the other side. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. With your support and our incredible guests, we're one of the top sales podcasts out there right now and I can't thank you enough. Now to keep the momentum going, it would mean the world to me if you could go and leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform and share some of your favorite episodes with your network. Also, check out my new website, jbarrows.com, where you'll find even more ways to engage. There's a ton of free content, and you can also get trained from me directly as an individual or for your team. Look, I'm out there selling every day just like you are, and I'm doing my best to stay on top of all the latest trends in sales and technology. So if you're looking to level up and you give a shit about this profession of sales, let's connect and make it happen together. 